Um, it is wonderful to see all of you and to welcome you to Duke or back to Duke. Um, and thank you for being here with us to learn more about innovation and entrepreneurship here at Duke. Um, we're very excited. We wish we could be having an in-person party. Um, as you see from my background, we typically would be giving you t-shirts such as the one I and some of my colleagues are sporting. Um, we would give, give you water bottles. And so someday um, when you do visit us at the bullpen, we will load you up. We'll give you all sorts of goodies. Um, but for now, um, if you want to introduce yourselves in the chat and let us know who you are, where you're from, um, that would be great if you're so inclined. Um, let's see, let me give the usual recording disclosure. Um, we are or will be very shortly um, recording this session for students who cannot be here um, in real time with us. Um, and so please be aware of that, but do, um, I encourage you if you are comfortable um, to turn on your video so that we can all see one another's um, beautiful unmasked faces. Um, and so just a word, a brief word of introduction. My name is Sarah Morrison and my wonderful colleague, William and Rogers and I run communications and marketing for Duke Innovation and Entrepreneurship, Duke i and &E. um, I am excited for y'all to hear more about INE's core programs. Um, and I think that if you are here, you have some, some idea sort of of, of what we do. Um, we believe that entrepreneurship is for everyone. And so whether you, you know, came to Duke already knowing that you want to found your own company someday, um, or if you are just interested in learning more about how you can change the world for the better, or if you just recognize that, um, you know, in order to succeed in the future, um, everyone will need, um, you know, innovation and entrepreneurship skills. Um, we, we have programs for you. Um, I, I want to add that many other programs and clubs and organizations exist at Duke that can support you in those goals. Um, at a usual in-person INE Fest, um, there would be many festive tables such as the one in my background um, where you could you know, chat with representatives from said organizations and clubs and programs, um, but the virtual format being what it is tonight, um, we just can't feature all of them. So um, I encourage you to visit the INE Fest um, page on our website that features some of those partners and and other organizations, um, we will drop the link. Um, oh, I, I grew up in New Jersey too, Kevin. <laughs> I saw the New Jersey comment before I saw that it was you. Yes, I'm from New Jersey. Just got distracted by the chat. Um, anyway, I really encourage all of you to um, visit the INE Fest page to, to familiarize yourself with some of those other organizations. Also, um, just a little plug for our newsletter and our social media channels. Um, please subscribe if you do not already and please follow us um, to learn about more um, opportunities and up-to-date um, events. Hopefully, you know, as the semester goes on increasingly, you know, in-person events with free food um, and funding opportunities and so forth. Um, okay, and so that, that I think concludes my little introduction. Um, I am excited to cede the floor to some of my um, illustrious colleagues who will talk about the programs they're affiliated with. And um, to my mind, most importantly, um, your peers, your fellow students who will talk about their experiences in those programs. Um, you see this um, beautiful agenda slide. Um, you know, you can take a screenshot of that if you like, and that way you'll have folks' names if you would like to reach out to them personally to get more information. Um, Thank you, Kevin, for that um, contact slide. Perfect. Um, and then I think that the way we're going to run questions is please go ahead and drop a question in the chat anytime you any anytime one crosses your mind. Um, some of them may be kind of logistical and you know smaller questions to address, and we can get to those in real time. Um, any of us staff or um, students can can jump on those. Um, and then larger questions that could generate a little more dialogue or you know. Uh, a little more in-depth response. We're gonna save those up for the end and hopefully we will um, have a real good amount of time for Q&A at, at the end. So we'll hopefully take about half um, of the session for um, to hear from uh, INE staff and students and then half for Q&A. And I think that is it. So let's get rolling.
Um, I believe I am handing things off to Megan Kelly Dancourt. You got it. Um, thanks, Sarah. Welcome everyone. We're so happy to have you join us. So I am Megan Kelly Dancourt. Um, I am a program, I'm an education program manager here at INE. In my role, I lead recruitment and admissions for the undergraduate certificate program in innovation entrepreneurship. I work on our Duke in Silicon Valley Study Away program. I supervise our INE fellows, and I'm also an instructor for INE 290 Innovation Product and Design. So I will put my scheduling link in the chat. If any of those things sound interesting to you, you should feel absolutely free to reach out to me um, and ask me any questions about any of those things. But I think, as Sarah said, what's most important is for you to hear from current students who are in so many of our programs. So I am going to hand it over to Ashna. It seems like some of you <laughs> know from Piage, um, another great INE program, or well, I don't know if it's technically INE, but another great innovation-centered program. Um, and she is one of our current INE fellows, and she's going to tell us tell you more about the certificate and also some of our great classes. Thanks for that intro, Megan. Um, hi, everyone. So good to see everyone here. Uh, definitely see some familiar faces, which is good to see. Um, but for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ashna. Um, I'm currently a junior and I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm double majoring in public policy and global health and also doing the INE certificate. Um, at Duke, I um, am also involved in some artistic groups. So I'm a part of an acapella group and a dance team and um, also involved with Project Edge, which is a great pre-orientation program. Uh, and also I'm a part of the Cube, which is on an entrepreneurial living group on campus. Um, I decided to join INE because I'm extremely interested in innovating for social good and social impact. And Duke is really an ex excellent place to learn more about that space. Um, Laura is my co INE fellow who sadly could not be here tonight, but I know she would have loved to speak to all of you. Um, whoever is controlling the presentation, you can you can move forward. Great. Thanks. Um, yeah, so um, I'd love to just talk about some exceptional classes that are offered here in the INE department, um, starting off with the Keystone. Um, this is actually a required class for the INE certificate, and it's taught by senior lecturing fellow uh, Kathy Amato. Um, it's a great class to really learn more about the fundamentals of entrepreneurship and what it's like to start and run your own business. The class involves some really interesting case studies and it's often referred to as sort of the mini MBA class by a lot of students who take it. So highly recommend that class. Um, I took it last, last fall. Another class I took last fall was Problem Solving Global Health with Dr. Dennis Clements. Um, and this course assigns students to small teams and tasks them with developing an innovative solution to any global health problem of their choosing. Um, I took this class and I had a wonderful time innovating with my team and I think it's great exposure to the global health innovation space at Duke. And finally, another excellent class at Duke is Customer Empathy and Brand Experience with Professor Brad Brinegar. He's chairman and former CEO of media agency McKinney, if that name sounds familiar to any of you. And this class focuses on understanding the underlying causes, causes of human behavior. And um, it kind of looks at the ways people respond to and choose different brands. Uh, this class is also centered around case studies and um, has some of the most interesting direct to consumer brands like Glossier and Warby Parker. Um, below, there's some more classes that um, just kind of touch on all of the different spaces and opportunities there are with INE classes that'll help you sort of develop that innovator's mindset and learn the ins and outs of what it's like to be an entrepreneur. Quick tip for any Pratt students that are out here tonight, um, a class that also counts under INE is EGR 101. So yeah. And then finally, to kind of just touch on some details of the certificate. So for a bit of an overview, the INE certificate program is the second largest certificate program at Duke, and it's our first experiential certificate program. So this essentially means that experiences outside of the classroom are fundamental to the certificate and help sort of differentiate, differentiate our program from typical certificate and minor programs at Duke. So you can start your journey by selecting one of five pathways that are listed here. And because there's dozens of INE classes available, selecting a pathway kind of helps um, you hone in on a specific set of, uh, set of topics for your electives. You're by no means stuck with this pathway and you can always even 
design your own pathway if you choose to sort of create your own subject focus. So in total, you'll have to take four classes, which includes the Keystone, which is what I talked about earlier, the Capstone, and then two electives that will focus on your chosen pathway. So while this certificate program is something you have to apply for, definitely don't let that deter you. The application is simply used to gauge your interest and make sure the certificate program is right for you rather than serve as an obstacle. Um, in terms of applying, there's a number of opportunities to apply. The eligibility window is going to be open from the second semester of your freshman year up until the fall of your junior year. So for this fall, we're gonna have two application deadlines. The first is going to be September 3rd, and that's going to be a deadline for sophomores and juniors. And for juniors, this is going to be the last chance for you to apply for the program. And then our second deadline is going to be October 27th, and this will only be for sophomores. Freshmen will have deadlines for you all in the spring, and we'll send that information out as we approach that next semester. Um, I hope you all enjoyed learning about the certificate and want to get more involved. Thank you so much, and um, I'll drop in my contact information if you ever want to ask me um, any questions or reach out if you're interested. Thanks. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, y'all. Um, I see a question in the chat. Uh, yep. Answer. Answer delivered. Um, I am now going to hand it to my colleague, Howie Ree, um, who is going to talk about the Student Founder Program. Hey everybody, great to be with you. Uh, so the Student Founder Program uh, is a joint initiative with Duke i &E and Duke Engineering. Um, and so uh, it's a community of student innovators and entrepreneurs dedicated to uh, starting ventures, starting companies. Uh, and the mantra for the program comes from our Duke alum, Melissa Bernstein, uh, who has created 10,000 products herself. Uh, it's to focus on unleashing creative potential and turn those sparks or ideas into transformative products and services. So if you think that you want to start something, uh, the Student Founder Program is for you. So just some quick examples of, uh, of alums that have gone through our program. Suhani Jalota founded the Mah Mina Mahila Foundation, which um, helps women in slums in Mumbai destigmatize menstruation. Uh, Uzoma Ayogu is in Nigeria. Uh, he is helping to uh, process vegetables so that vegetable oil can be made in a more professional manner. Max Stern uh, started Closure after one of his good friends died at Duke. Closure helps uh, families take care of all of those things that they need to close down, like Gmail and social media accounts, whenever somebody dies. They've done over 100,000. Uh, deaths. Josh Miller um, started Farm Shots using geosatellite data to look at farms in order to figure out which parts of the farms were damaged or in drought conditions. He sold that to Syngenta. Tiana Horn um, started Flower Child Remedies uh, when her hair was badly damaged by products uh, typically sold at drugstores. So she started an all-natural hair care company, which she still, run, she still runs today. James Wu started um, Adapt-A-Lab using machine learning to help analyze which candidates are right for a programming job. And he's raised $2 million for that. And Mackenzie Drazen um, recently, just yesterday, raised $3 million for her startup, My Resource, which she started after she lost her sister Shelby to suicide. So the three main components of the program, one-on-one -on -one mentorship, um, both with coaches and with alumni. Two is group coaching. Um, everybody in the program signs up for one weekly session, which they attend each week. Um, about half of these sessions are already full, uh, but there are still about uh, 10 sessions that still have capacity. And lastly, we have a speaker series with around 40 speakers uh, each semester. Uh, lastly, I'll just say that Melissa and Doug Entrepreneurs is the selective program uh, after Student Founder Program. For the top participants, we give a $5,000 stipend, an intensive summer program, and the opportunity to pitch for funding, uh, where we typically raise about $50,000 for our students. Uh, and last but not least, stay immediately after tonight's q and I'll be sticking around for a 15-minute breakout group. 
Uh, thank you so much. And thank you to Aishani, our student, for uh, being here as well. OK, so I guess I can go. Um, I think that if you are starting a company at Duke, the student founder program is absolutely crucial to join. It's an incredible opportunity to meet people. Um, so as a bit of background about myself, I'm pre-med, but me and one of my friends, we had an idea to start a nonprofit kind of based on tackling a really pervasive issue in our community, which is loneliness. Um, and we thought that, you know, like there's a really great solution that we can come up with, but we had no idea on how to implement it. And implementation was just like out of our mind because all we know is like biochemistry and organic chemistry. We don't know anything business. Um, so we were kind of suggested to join Student Founders Program and it has been an amazing ride since then. We're currently Melissa and Doug entrepreneurs. Um, we got funding and we've met some incredible people. We've gotten incredible mentors. Um, I think it's absolutely crucial that you join Student Founders Program if you're looking to start something because like the cohorts that you're with, the people, they're passion, their dedication to whatever project they're doing. It's so invigorating and it's a really great experience and like it pushes you to do more. Um, the connections you built are crazy. So yeah, I absolutely recommend Student Founders Program for anyone interested in building something from the ground up. Thank you so much. Thanks, Howie and Aishani. Um, yeah, I always love, I'm always so inspired to hear um, what Student Founder Program students are working on. Um, and speaking of being inspired, um, I am now going to hand it to um, Amy and Arlene, who will talk about Studio Duke. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah and uh, uh, INA team. Um, good evening, everybody. Hope y'all are safe and well and Holding steady at this time. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, my name's Amy Unell, a fellow Dukey. Uh, P. Ed, shout out. Uh, y'all invited us to speak with y'all uh, last week, and that was super fun. And uh, look forward to continuing to do that. And everybody who's not P. Edge, shout out to you as well. Um, and yeah, I think one of the themes that you're, you know, finding is this kind of intersection of creativity and innovation, entrepreneurship, and uh, Studio Duke really brings that home and, and in a way that if you're, you have a creative project that, as the slide says, might be one of these uh, dozen kind of, um, you know, things under the creative umbrella or more. I mean, gaming, et cetera. Um, take a shot and, and apply to Studio Duke. Um, it's for your ongoing creative projects to help take them to the next level uh, through mentorship and, and with a student cohort. Um, as well uh, to kind of go along in this journey. And um, my way to, to Studio Duke is, is I was a producer at NBC Today Show and then a documentary filmmaker and has taught filmmaking at Duke. And so it's really awesome to be able to um, help, uh, I guess you all, you know, keep your projects and creativity going. And I wanna introduce uh, a fellow Dukey 2020 grad, Arlene, um, who was in Studio Duke last year uh, to give just an example of, of one of our awesome Studio Duke projects and her experience. Take it away, Arlene. Thank you for that introduction, Amy. Hi, everyone. I'm Arlene. I graduated in May. Um, just to talk a little bit about my Studio Duke experience. So I my creative project was a memoir, but I had also never taken a creative writing class at Duke before. And that's something I want to reiterate is that you don't feel like you, you need to have a creative artsy major to be able to submit a creative project. And so I was actually paired with a literary agent based in New York. Um, and so I was able to work with her and Studio Duke was a really great place to be supported. It was just an affirming space where we were meeting just to create and to do work that we cared about. And it didn't really matter if there was like an, you know, financial gain or output. It was really things that we were passionate about. And we were, you know, you're connected with people in the field who can help you turn that creative idea into like, you know, a screenplay into a movie or like my memoir, like into a book. But yeah, I think just to speak a little bit more on that um, during my my time at Studio Duke, I realized that I wanted to turn it into like an audio documentary project. And Amy was really great at connecting me with resources into how to connect with people into the radio industry. And right after graduation, I landed a position at a podcasting production company. And I'm working on like pitching my audio series and also just like learning how to 
be a producer in like the audio world. So super happy to talk to anyone about anything. If anyone has any questions about the application process or podcasting and radio or just creative bubbles at Duke, I'll put my contact information in the chat. Please feel free to reach out, but yeah, apply. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Arlene. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, just the fact that you're in New York City right now uh, working at your, you know, on your project and at a company that does podcast, um, we want to help, you know, this is what Studio Duke is all about. So thanks for making time, Arlene. Um, and as it says, the deadline uh, to apply is September 10th, 1159 p.m. <laughs> so if you have any questions in the meantime, uh, we also do Demon, the Duke Entertainment Media Arts Network. Um, you might see some donuts and avocado stickers around campus. That's all part of Demon. Um, and uh, I'll put my info in the chat as well. But thanks for your time. And I'll toss it to the next colleague. All right, excellent. And that is Matt Nash, who's going to be talking about social innovation here at Duke. Thanks so much, Sarah. Good evening, everybody. I am Matt Nash. I'm the uh, Managing Director for Social Innovation at Duke i and I'm also a... Um, uh, an adjunct professor of the practice over at the Sanford School. So, you know, if you're interested in using innovation and entrepreneurship to make an impact, to have a, a, a profound impact on the world, you see behind me this, the sustainable development goals, for example, whether it's health, environment, renewable energy, um, you know, uh, conservation, food security, so many other areas, then you're in the right place because Duke is widely recognized as a global leader in promoting innovative, sustainable solutions to the world's most pressing problems. And I want to just speak to you a few moments. I'm also joined by a colleague and a student here this evening. But depending on your interests, you know, there's a lot of ways you already heard from some of the students this evening who are interested in pursuing uh, social impact or environmental impact, uh, some of our programming. And one of our objectives here is to prepare students for a lifetime of innovation and leadership for the public good. So through our courses, uh, that we offer and helping other faculty offer through engaging with clubs. You see some of the clubs we work with here, the Net Impact Club, the Duke Impact Investing Group, who uh, not that long ago got $100,000 from the trustees to create an impact fund. We helped launch the UNICEF Club last year. Uh, design for America uses design skills for social and environmental impact. These are clubs that we work with. We have a number of speakers and events throughout the year. We also engage with other parts of the university, like the civic engagement uh, portion of Duke through Duke Engage. Every summer, we offer a Duke Engage Detroit program, working with uh, entrepreneurs, innovation, and economic development in Detroit. You'll hear about that uh, briefly in a moment. Next slide, please. We also have a number of workshops and coaching sessions. We uh, are in, engaged in the Student Founders Program, for example. As we offer those, there is a newsletter for social innovation and entrepreneurship. When you sign up for a Duke i &E newsletter on our website, you can click the social innovation news and hear about all kinds of great opportunities. I want to turn it over for a moment to my colleague, Catherine Black, who's going to tell you really briefly about three um, global opportunities that we engage in here at Duke, a great way to get involved and some experience and, and resources. So Catherine, can you share a little bit about comp uh, competitions and conferences? Yes. Hi, everyone. So glad to see so many of you here. Um, my name is Catherine, and I work with IME on a couple of different levels, one of them um, with the social innovation space. So happy to see everyone. Um, a few of the things we have competition conference related are the Holt Prize, the Fowler Global Social Innovation Challenge, and then CGIU, which is the Clinton Global Initiative University. And what those are, and the Holt Prize is our competition that we help support in the fall. And so that's an annual competition. It's a $1 million prize. And our students have gotten up to the top 15, as far as the top 15 with the Holt Prize. So we have a Duke round, and then the winner of that moves on to the global competition. Um, there are gonna be details coming out of that in the coming weeks. You'll hear, hear most about that from um, things in our newsletter. And also we have a campus director who is a student campus director that actually runs that competition in partnership with Holt who applied to that and will be um, leading that charge. So, and then our spring competition is the Fowler Global Social Innovation Challenge. And that is actually a problem analysis competition. So it has a couple of different levels to it. Um, the first round is where you analyze a social or environmental ch challenge of your choice. And so you're actually gonna have to dig deep into the problem analysis portion and really analyze what the problem is that you're hoping to solve or hoping to kind of move the needle in in some way. And then 
you apply with that round. And then if you make it to round two, that's when you propose and validate a potential solution to that problem. And so these rounds are all um, judged by different guest judges that we bring on, um, as well as some of our staff. And then the winner of the Duke round, actually it's the two winners of the Duke round, first and second place, go on to pitch for their idea, go on to pitch in the, um, the round at Fowler, Global Social Innovation Challenge, and they pitch their idea for up to 50,000 in seed funding. And we actually won that competition, um, not this year, but the year before, which was really, really exciting. This year, we our team was, two, two of our students were, um, both of our teams were in the final, I believe top five. Um, but the year before that, we actually, um, one of our students won the, the prize. So it's, it's very doable, really exciting competition. And then the Clinton Global Initiative University. Oh, and for the Fowler Global Social Innovation Challenge, that'll be, like I said, in the spring. So round one usually takes place in February. Um, and then our third thing competition conference wise is the global social is the Clinton Global Initiative University. And that is actually where students apply to that with a commitment to action. So you're applying with kind of a commitment that you set forth and you are either accepted or you're not accepted um, to Clinton Global Initiative. And then if you are, it culminates in an annual meeting, which will hopefully be in person this year. And that's something that is funded through INE. So hopefully you all will um, if you have venture ideas or anything like that, or you're in the student founder program and you're working on your, your ventures, hopefully this will be a nice way for you all to actually be able to present those and, you know, move forward in a competition space. Thanks, Catherine. Before I turn it over to a uh, student representative, Cheryl, but I want to share one other really cool uh, word about some things we're doing. Uh, we're, we've been working with, with UNICEF. UNICEF is the UN Children's Fund to look around the world for innovations for children that have significant potential for impact. And we, we select these innovators. Our first cohort is uh, focused on menstrual health and hygiene in East Africa. Our second cohort are innovators working uh, more broadly across Africa for equitable sanitation and hygiene. And over a course of a two-year program, each of these cohorts get a variety of different support coaching uh, from us, including some student engagement. So we have student projects in some of our courses. We have some speakers and events coming up in the end of October, all kinds of cool stuff. If you're interested in engaging with some real live, amazing social innovators, uh, these are, are great folks. You can always chat with us about that. So let's stop there and let me turn it over to Donovan. Donovan, are you here? I'm looking uh, at my screen here to tell you a little bit more about some uh, some experiences he's had. Uh, so Donovan Tullock, over to you. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Donovan, and I am a senior studying public policy, global health, and also doing the INE certificate. So as you can probably tell by now, students have a lot of opportunities to engage with innovation at Duke through their coursework, clubs, organizations, and also programs. So for example, this past semester, I had the opportunity to take a class called Social Innovation Practicum, where I was able to engage with social entrepreneurs to learn more about and support the development of their products, validation process, and also scaling their um, products through innovative and sustainable um, ways. So my project that I worked on was mainly focused on equipping a Kenyan nonprofit organization with best practices in scaling their open source innovation in a financially sustainable way. And through this experience, I've been able to learn key collaboration and communication skills that has helped me in my uh, other coursework and internship experiences. And another experience that I had with innovation at Duke was with the Duke Engage Detroit program this past summer. And within this program, I was able to work alongside a national nonprofit called Green Life Fund Detroit uh, that aims to help transform the experiences of youth and families who are often underrepresented in the Detroit community. And my role primarily for this organization was to support their uh, fundraising and communication process through identifying different uh, funders and uh, partners that they could work in with the future. And this experience has really helped me to increase my confidence with presenting my ideas and also allowed me to step out of my comfort zone uh, by providing me with opportunities to engage with projects that I've never would have known I had an interest in without doing this program. So I highly recommend that you all check out the opportunities that Duke has around campus related to innovation and entrepreneurship because the courses, clubs, programs, they all really helped build my experience here at Duke. Thanks so much, Donovan, and thanks, Catherine. I just want to share one final word that uh, that I and also Howie Ree are going to hang around for a little while after the end in breakouts if you want to ask either of us questions. I'm happy to hang around to answer questions about social innovation and entrepreneurship. 
Awesome. Over to Kevin, I believe, to talk about design at Duke. All right, thank you. I'm going to also put in the chat a link to this spot on our website. I'm going to just spend a few minutes introducing you some ways to experience design at Duke. Um, if I had to broadly sum up some key aspects of what that means when you're at Duke and when you say you want to get involved in design, you're going to see a few things. Uh, we really think about design as a way to engage with the user or the community or the participants who are going to engage with your uh, innovation or the thing that you're starting. So we look at that from a human-centered approach, bringing a lot of interdisciplinary teams, a lot of co-creation, both with the people who are inventing or creating something new or an experience, as well as the community you're serving. And then we want to make sure that whatever we're doing, we're spending a time throughout that process really understanding who those people are because it results in better products, better services, better outcomes. And we would go through that uh, whole process, really looking at whether it's a product or a service or a community that we're serving, we look at it through like, how can we serve them better and have them at the center of our process? And so there's different ways to experience that. I'm gonna highlight a few, there are more. So if you go to the next slide. So here are just a few ways. Uh, that in the beginning of this, the first year design program was mentioned. There's also even a follow-on course after that, if after you create something um, through that course and want to continue through the design process. A few courses highlighted that have different approaches to um, design. And so those are in the middle. We have in the bottom left here, there's two places if you like to make things uh, on that kind of view of design, whether it's for a kind of human-centered design or not. Uh, you have the Innovation Collab has so many options and opportunities. So take a look at that. Or the foundry has a lot of building space, creator, maker space. Um, so great places if you like to create things with your hands. And on that far right, we have an open design studio and those offerings that Jonathan's going to highlight through his experiences. And then a few clubs pulled out. Hack Duke has a, a conference in the spring focused on design. There's a, a new emerging group called Design at Duke, like a community of people practicing design. And then Matt already mentioned Design for America. So many ways to get involved in this idea of design that happens throughout innovation and entrepreneurship. I encourage you to look, look at all these. And if you have any questions, just let us know. And I'll turn it to Jonathan, to talk about his experiences. Uh, yeah, thanks, Kevin. Uh, hi, all. I'm Jonathan. I'm a senior uh, studying computer science and philosophy. Um, so as Kevin was saying, I have a fair bit of experience now with design and uh, I'll be honest, it, it wasn't something I was really searching out. I kind of happened into it as I was searching for a uh, summer opportunity my sophomore year of college. And I have to say, it's probably the best instance of serendipity that I've experienced so far in my college career, because from that summer program, which I did, which was called Open Design Plus, I ended up taking two different courses in the I and E uh, department one, which was listed on the previous slide, which was 290. And then I took a graduate level course, which was 590 the next semester. In both of those courses, we were really focusing on more accessible computer science education. And I've been able to continue with that work actually over the summer and into this school year. I'm helping lead a Bass Connections project um, that we're doing called the Human Flourishing Project. I'm helping lead the education sub team. And we're really working to make this kind of vision and thing that I've been kind of playing around with for a while into a reality for third to fifth grade elementary school teachers. So it's something that I would say design at Duke has really brought out a lot of the passion that I was missing in my college career. I was kind of just going through the motions for a while. Um, and yeah, uh, I've learned a bunch of different things, a lot of things that I could spend a long time talking about, but I would say the biggest takeaway is it's not too late to get involved with something completely new, something that you didn't think that you were ever gonna get involved with. Uh, so if you wanna get involved, you can pursue one of the opportunities that Kevin showed, but I would say the best way to get involved initially would be to just take a class uh, and see where it takes you. Wonderful, wonderful advice. I am. Um, I 
I think by now, hopefully y'all are seeing that there are just so many different ways to be innovative, first of all, um, and entrepreneurial. Um, I'm glad to see that we have plenty of time left for q and I think, in my opinion, um, it's really helpful and inspirational just to hear from your fellow students about what they've worked on. Um, and we have a couple of um, folks here who we have not heard from yet about um, specifically um, venture. I think they've been, both of them have been involved in INE in different ways, but specifically the student founder program and um, ventures that they um, worked on. And so Arushi and Tahir, um, let's hear from you. Arushi, do you want to take a minute and let us, and give sort of an overview of your, your work? Yeah. Your experience. <laughs> Hi guys, my name's Arushi. I am a senior. I'm majoring in biomedical engineering and global health, also doing the INE certificate. And yes, I am pre-med. Uh, specifically, I've been involved with INE in a few different ways. Of course, I'm in the certificate. I'm also in the Student Founders Program. My work at Duke has focused largely in global health innovation, and this started with the first year design program in Engineering 101. And so as I continued working on my project, I realized I really didn't know how we would be able to implement it. And since I was working mainly with physicians and engineers, who had not actually gotten this far on such a design project, we were really lacking in that knowledge. So we, so I wanted to learn more about that. And that's why I joined Duke Student Founders Program. And that has been a really amazing community of just other student innovators to hear what other students are doing and just sharing contacts and learning from other innovators as we all kind of navigate this together. Wonderful, thank you. And to hear, do you wanna speak about your experience? Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you. Thank you all again for being here. Um, so my, a little bit about me. Um, my name's Tahir. I am a senior, um, which is pretty sad to say now, but um, I'm studying neuroscience and computer science and the INE certificate too. And like Arushi, um, you know, I've been involved in INE in a few different ways. Um, right off the bat when I came to Duke, this was something I was fairly interested in, um, even though I am also pre-med as of now, but we'll see what happens. Um, but, you know, I, I was accepted luckily into Duke and Silicon Valley. Um, and so, you know, Kevin and I had a great summer and Megan um, for, for a little bit in, in Silicon Valley. And I think that experience was probably the most transformative experience of my college career. Um, I don't know, you know, what it was or if it was something in the air, but, I, you know, it, it genuinely changed my, I don't know, perspective on how to approach opportunities, um, how to interact with people, how to network, right? It exposed me to so much. Um, and when I came back to Duke, I felt very rejuvenated um, as a young, ambitious sophomore. So um, around, around COVID time, um, I started a venture um, called CS Sidekicks. If any of you have heard of it, we are recruiting for Sidekicks right now, side note. But, um, you know, that led me to enroll in the Student Founders Program um, and work with Howie and, you know, some um, amazing mentors. And I was a part of a community where it was a lot of ambitious individuals who were working on their own, you know, experiences and opportunities. And, uh, you know, I stole some ideas from them. They hopefully got some things from me. Um, and, you know, we built off one another. And now I am here as a senior um, with a huge network of individuals who are very like-minded um, and hopefully, you know, some that will last for a lifetime. So I need is amazing in all aspects. Um, if you need ideas, uh, it's the place for you. And if you have ideas, it's definitely the place for you. Love that. Love that sentiment. Thank you so much. All right. I uh, thank you to everyone, especially students and recent alums who have shared your experiences. I want to make sure that we have this QA, this QA session, I'm sure you all are burning with questions. I'm sure we're gonna get a lot of questions. <laughs> Anybody? You can unmute yourself, you can pop it in the chat. Will this session be uploaded on the site? It certainly will. 
Thank you for asking. Excellent question. Um, yes, the recording will be uploaded on the INE Fest page um, and we'll send it out um, in an upcoming newsletter soon. Thank you for asking. Other questions? Oh, that's a great question. Um, let's see, Amy or Arlene, do you want to answer this question for Mason about Studio Duke? How often are there opportunities to receive peer feedback on an ongoing project? Yeah, I can answer this. So we meet around once a month as a group, but something that's really great too is when you initially get accepted or like become a part of Studio Duke, you get paired with a buddy who's working with a project that's like similar to what you're doing. And so you get to meet um, as often as you'd like. <laughs> so I was I was matched up with a, another writer. And so we got to like share each other like our drafts and just kind of talk about our ideas. So um, yeah, it was really great. I think it, it's great to have the group feedback and then also to have someone who's like in your creative corner um, as often as you'd like, like a creative friend. Oh, um, thank you for that. Um, and then I see a question. So we didn't actually explain, Tahir, you spoke about Duke and Silicon Valley. We didn't actually um, include that as one of the core programs that we gave an overview about. So I wonder if Kevin, you would like to just sort of explain briefly what Duke and Silicon Valley is um, and give an overview of the, of the timeline for that. Yeah, real quick. Uh, so Duke and Silicon Valley is a summer away, study away program. So there's a lot of different Duke in programs. So our, this one is focused on uh, innovation entrepreneurship in Silicon Valley and occurs in the first summer term. So it occurs in about the May-June timeframe. And typically a global ed sets the dates, but typically it's in October there. Uh, you can start applying and then the due dates begin in uh, December, January, and then uh, end sometime in February. It's um, it's kind of, their uh, decisions are done in waves, if you will. So if, if it's something that you're really want to do the most available spots are in the first round or the first wave of decisions so apply early if you're into it and um, that typically is like I said sometime right around the beginning of the first semester or at the end of December I mean sorry spring semester mm -hmm. yeah and it's it's a just a very cool program um, that was virtual this year but typically takes the group to Silicon Valley um, you meet with all sorts of companies and um, alums who work um, in a really broad range of different startups and um, and it's, it's just really cool. There's a there's a piece on the blog um, that recaps um, some of the work that the students in this year's program did and the, the folks who they heard from. Um, and so if you're interested, you can check that out, as well as, of course, the the program page for DSV. Uh, thank you, Megan, for pointing out you do get a credit for Duke and Silicon Valley as well. What other questions do y'all have? I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it an uncomfortable amount of time. Aha, <laughs> can you apply for Studio Duke as a freshman? I don't know the answer to that. If you have a, um, great question. If you have a project that's already on, you know, ongoing, um, send me, you know, send Studio Duke an email or myself an email um, and before you apply if you want and I can kind of suss it out a little bit, but we have had first years apply and I'm open to the idea. Oh, more examples. Well, we got so many questions. I know that this is great. Well, you have, I will let you take this one, of course, Amy, but I would also encourage Charlotte and others interested in Studio Duke to visit the webpage because there's just like a comprehensive list and it's really, um, it's really interesting to go through and see what everybody's working on, but sorry, answer, answer about your programming. <laughs> well, that, that's exactly right, Sarah. I was going to say, uh, to your point, check out the website um, because it, it lists all the students in the, who have done Studio Duke and then also um, our mentors um, at this moment. We're always adding mentors, but um, so that could really be helpful to kind of suss out 
uh, your question in terms of the types of uh, projects um, and just the range. So um, feel free to put something in the chat if you have a if you're thinking of a specific kind of creative project, and I can shout that out too. Uh, but it's a huge creative umbrella. So uh, if if Studio Duke can't support it, we'll figure out who can. There's so many amazing programs at INE. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I see a question about um, Engine, which is Pratt's engineering entrepreneurship. Oh, thank you, Howie. Um, student founder is a joint venture with Engine and a great way to get, yep, a good way to get to know Steve McClelland um, of Engine. So Steve McClelland is um, an entrepreneur in residence for Pratt. He also um, heads up with um, Howie, the student founder program. Um, and so there is a fair amount of overlap. Um, I would say, I, I would use this again as a means of plugging our newsletter and social media channels because we, um, you know, if there are um, engine opportunities that are available to a broader, not just Pratt, um, you know, student body, we will certainly publicize them. Um, and you can, of course, check out um, Engine's website too. Um, and yeah, see how we know about Steve, who is amazing. else? What other questions? <laughs> Where's the best ice cream in Durham? That is a, that's probably a hotly contested question, <laughs> but I am partial to Loco Pops. Oh, two roosters, got to vote for two roosters. Um, so, okay, y'all, you can see um, Howie has dropped a note, um, now opening the breakout rooms. Um, Howie, how is this working? Do you have links to those? Those are just in the Zoom. So we'll, oh, it's, okay, breakout yeah. rooms, I see, I see, I see. Okay, okay, great. So for those of you who are interested in speaking in more depth about um, the Student Founder Program and Social Innovation, those breakout rooms are open um, and feel free to join those. And then for those of you who choose to depart at this point, um, thank you so much. And we will look forward to hopefully seeing you this semester and into the, into the rest of your time here at Duke. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And please, again, please subscribe to our newsletter and, and social accounts. Um, and we will do our best to let you know about each and every opportunity available to you. Um, all right.